Welcome to Lifeline, a production of Lifeline Media and United Christian Fellowship of Arlington, where Reverend George Effingham serves as senior pastor and we share the word to impact the world. Join us now as we hear the word from the Lord in our Sunday worship service. Today's word is uh, taken from Genesis chapter 2, verses 15 through 25. Genesis chapter 2, verses 15 through 25. And it reads in the New King James Version um, this way. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. Out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field, and every bird of the air, and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. So Adam gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Amen. I want to talk to us today from the subject, God's plan for man. God's plan for men. As we celebrate fathers today, I suppose there's no better time for us to revisit and remember God's plan for men. The idea of this sermon is, is to present the man as God designed him to be, not necessarily as he is today. The purpose is to remind all men of our position, our purpose, and power as God intended so that we can truly be all that he intended us to be. Without such reminders, we will forget who we are and be swept away by cultural ties that make us something other than what God intended. When God created man, he created him innocent and without sin. He created him in God's own image and breathed his breath into him. He placed him in a beautiful garden and gave him the responsibility of taking care of it. He gave him his word, commanding him not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and expected him to obey it. He created the woman from one of the man's ribs and brought her to him, 
that he might name and receive her as his companion and helper in taking care of the garden according to God's word. However, when sin entered into the world, it corrupted every aspect of God's creation, including the very nature of the man. Man became wicked and departed from God's plan in every sense. He became a threat to the world that God charged him to take care of. He became disobedient to the word that God gave him to obey. He became distant from the woman that God gave to be his companion. And today, because of man's sin, women have learned to live with little or no expectation of men. And some say that they have no need of men at all. Today, because of man's sin, many men have become ignorant or negligent of their God-given responsibility. Today, the Holy Spirit reminds all men of three critical responsibilities given to men by God. Responsibility for the world, responsibility for the word, and finally, responsibility for the woman. I'm talking about God's plan for men. First of all, in the text, we see that God gave man responsibility for the world. We find that in verse 15 of our text. That God gave man responsibility for the world. And so we who are men, we must develop it and we must also defend it. In verse 15 of our text, scripture records that God put the man in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. To tend something is to cultivate it, prepare it, take care of it, or develop it in such a manner as to improve it and make it grow. The idea was that the man was to take care of the physical world of the earth in such a way as to make it productive and flourish. God created the world with everything that humankind needed for food and physical life and gave the man the responsibility to develop or take care of it to work on it so that it would fulfill the needs of humankind. Besides the responsibility of tending the earth, the man was also given the responsibility to keep the earth. To keep something is to protect it from deterioration or destruction. The man was given the responsibility of taking care of the earth to keep it from growing wild and becoming unfavorable for human life. Consequently, the man had a twofold responsibility in relation to the physical world to develop it and to defend it. In Daniel chapter 6, verses 1. Two and three. The Babylonian Empire had grown so big that King Nebuchadnezzar decided to appoint 120 deputies to help him govern it. He also appointed three governors to whom these 120 deputies were to report. And out of these three governors, 
he sought to make a Jewish exile whose name was Daniel, the leader of the three governors, and in effect, the second in command over the entire empire of Babylon. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 6 and verse 3 that the king, verses 1, 2, and 3, that the king wanted to do this because Daniel had distinguished himself above all the other governors. The king wanted leaders who would be responsible for collecting all the taxes that were due to him and making the kingdom better than it already was. And today as we celebrate Father's Day, let me say to us that we as men must take up our God-given responsibility for the world. The man was the foremost creation of God on earth and the first of humankind. And it was to him that God gave the responsibility to develop and defend the earth. And so since we know that, let every man stand up and work to make the earth better and more productive than we met it. Let us stand up and work, cultivating and utilizing the resources of the earth to provide for ourselves and our families like God intended. Furthermore, let us be defenders or protectors of the earth, knowing that without our care, the earth which God has entrusted to us will become uninhabitable to us and the other life forms that God created. God created man and gave the man the responsibility for the physical world. That meant that the man was to work, to cultivate, to prepare, to um, work on the physical world, to make it productive, to make it better, to make it fulfill the intentions of God. And we see this in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 28, when after the creation of man, the Bible says, God said, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. God's plan for man was that the man had responsibility for the physical world. But I want you to know that God had another plan, another responsibility for men. He gave man responsibility for the world. And then he gave the man the responsibility for the world. You will find that in verses 16 and 17 of our text. And because God has given the man the responsibility for the word, it means that we must know the word and then we must keep the word. In verses 16 and 17 of the text, scripture records that God commanded the man with these words. He says, of every tree, of the garden, you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. The word of God to the man revealed three things about God. 
First of all, his sufficient provision. Secondly, his strict prohibition. And thirdly, his severe punishment. And these three things you will find over and over and over again in the word of God. First of all, his sufficient provision. Secondly, his strict prohibition. And thirdly, his severe punishment. God's sufficient provision was evident in that he gave the man permission to eat freely of all the trees in the garden except one. This means that God had made more than enough provision to meet man's physical need. But in God's word, we also find his strict prohibition. And that was evident in the fact that he forbade the man from eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And finally, we see God's severe punishment, evident in his stipulation of death as the penalty for disobeying his word. That the word was given to the man revealed his responsibility to not eat, but that it came with a penalty um, revealed or reveal his responsibility to keep it. So God gave the word to the man, which meant that he had a responsibility to know it. Then he stipulated a penalty, which meant that he had a responsibility to keep it. The word of God was not an option. It was a matter of life, and death. You see, when I first became born again, I had a great burden for my family and my friends who did not know the Lord. And so I prayed for them all the time. And I would talk to them about Christ every opportunity that I had. But I had a friend whom whenever I would talk to him about Christ, never yielded his heart to Jesus Christ. But he always reminded me and always assured me that he made sure that his wife and children went to church every Sunday. He was a nice guy, but he had left the greatest responsibility of all the responsibility of the word of God, a matter of life and death. He left that great responsibility for his wife to carry alone. Today, as we celebrate Father's Day, let us as men take up our God-given responsibility for the word of God, knowing that the man was the foremost creation of God on earth and the first creation of humankind. And it was to him that God gave the responsibility for the word of God. Let every man determine in our heart to know the word of God and let every man determine even further to keep the word of God. The word of God is not a suggestion of God among many other options. It is the commandment of God given to us that we would keep it lest we die. It is an amazing thing how many men would leave this greatest responsibility of all Leave it for their wives. Leave it for the women to bear alone. May God give us as men wisdom 
on this Father's Day that we would take up our responsibility for the world. Because it is still true in Romans chapter 6 and verse 23 that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Let every man under the sound of my voice remember the words of Psalm 119 and verse 11 where it says, Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. This is what every man must do so that we and our wives and our children will not sin against God. I said God gave man responsibility for the world. And then he gave man responsibility for the world. And then finally, God gave man responsibility for the woman. You will find it there in verses 18 to 25. And because God has given us as men responsibility for the woman, we must embrace her and we must engage her. In verses 18 through 25 of our text, the text reveals a, this third responsibility that God gave to man. And that was the woman. As the man named the animals that God had created, there was none like him. So God decided to make him a helper comparable to him. God put the man to sleep, removed one of his ribs, made a female version of the man, and brought her to him. When the man saw her, he rejoiced because unlike all other human life, she was just like him, the bone of his bone and the flesh of his flesh. The man even named her woman, recognizing the Bible says that she came out from him. That the woman had been created to be man's helper indicated that she was to join him in fulfilling his God-given responsibility. You see, where there is no responsibility, there is no need for a helper. But God said, I will give him a helper which means that she was to be a partner with the man in fulfilling his God-given responsibility. The man understood this critical truth. And you know what he did? He embraced the woman. And he also understood that he had to engage her in the work that God had given him. Because she was his partner. The relationship between the man and the woman in marriage is like that between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the Holy Trinity. And I want you to hear me well now. You see that though the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are different in personality, and different in function. They have the same nature and attributes, and they are all equally God. Today, as we celebrate Father's Day, let us remember that men and women are different in personality and even in function. But we share the same nature and are equal in the sight of God. No matter how hard a man tries, he cannot have a baby. Amen. 
Be, be, because God created him and gave him different functions that he gave the woman. I thought I better share that with us. But as we see in the text that we celebrate while we celebrate Father's Day today, so let us as men Take up our God-given responsibility for the woman. Knowing that God gave her to us as a companion and not a competitor. A partner and not a possession. The Bible says that God, when he had created the woman, he brought her to the man as if putting her hand in his hand and say, you take care of her from here. And I want you to know that all of us need to understand that God said, I'm going to give the man a helper comparable to him. Meaning that she, the woman was like him. She had the same essence. She had the same value. So let us embrace our wives as equals in marriage and not as subordinates. The word of God states that God created woman to be man's helper. So let us as men engage our wives as equal partners in the work that God has called us to do as stewards of the world and of the world. As we celebrate Father's Day, let us engage our wives in the great work of raising our children as a generation that will know and serve the Lord. While we must never forget that God created the man before the woman, let us not view our primacy in creation as reason to devalue her, but as a reason to take on the great responsibility for caring for her. I said earlier on that because of sin, the nature of man has changed from what God intended to the extent now that many women have learned how to live without men. And there are so many women who are even claiming now that they have no need for any man in their lives at all. But the will of God when he created the man and the woman, was that the man would be responsible for the woman. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 to 27, the Bible says, Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. What the Bible is saying is that when God gave the woman to the man, that God gave the man an assignment to make sure that if there were any wrinkles, if there were any blemishes, if there were any spots to be found in her, that the man would remove those wrinkles, remove those spots, remove those blemishes by the washing of the word, the word of God. That is what God expected the man to do when the woman ate of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. God expected the man 
Now that the woman had a blemish, now that she had a stain, now that she had a wrinkle, he expected the man to clean her up with the washing of the word of God. But Adam didn't do that. And if you read later on in Genesis chapter 3, God, the Bible says that God told Adam, he said, Adam, I am going to punish you because instead of cleaning Eve up, when Eve got herself in a mess, you joined her in the midst of the mess. Adam, I gave her to you. And I hold you responsible for her. I'm saying to us that God had a threefold plan for men. He, got, he gave man responsibility for the world. He gave man responsibility for the world. And he gave man responsibility for the woman. And so as I get ready to close, let me remind every man, every father, under the sound of my voice. Be responsible. Be responsible. Be faithful to what to the responsibilities that God has given to you. Be faithful to your family. Be faithful to your wife. Be faithful to the world. Be faithful to the word. Be faithful to the woman. This is our God-given responsibility. I want to say to the man out there who does not know Jesus Christ that you must be redeemed. For the man of God who knows Jesus Christ, be responsible. But for the one who does not, be redeemed. Turn to Jesus Christ by faith so that he will give you the power to bear your responsibility. Jesus Christ gave us the perfect example of what a man should be. A faithful servant of God. In Philippians chapter 2, beginning in verse 5, the Bible says we should be like Jesus. It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. He said, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. But he made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant, and coming in the likeness of men, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. This is the example of Jesus Christ for every man under the sound of our voice, that we would be humble, that we would be servants of God, that we would be obedient to the word of God, and that we would be faithful to serve God even unto the very end. And God told us that if we men, if we take up our responsibility, he said he will reward us. Listen to what he did to Jesus because Jesus took up his responsibility. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 9. He said, therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. God is saying that if you take up your responsibility as a man, that he he will reward you highly. Let me close by talking to the women because there are some men who have ignored or they are negligent of their responsibilities. They have given the heavy burden 
Sometimes they have given all the burden to the woman. And I want to say to the women today, thank God who has made you a helper of man. But he has also made you a comparable helper. That means that you can stand if you must stand. You don't have to live your life waiting for some man who is still a boy to take care of you. You can stand and serve God and be faithful to God. Now let me ask you this as I close. If God said that he will honor the man who takes up his responsibility. What do you think he will do to the woman who takes up her responsibility plus the responsibility of the man? Did you hear what I said? If God will reward the man who fulfills his responsibility, what do you think he will do to the woman who is doing the responsibility of the man and the woman at the same time? The day of your exaltation is coming. God will bless you and God will keep you. Today's message is for the fathers, for the men. God has a plan for you. Stand up and take up your responsibility. Amen. You've been watching Lifeline, a production of Lifeline Media and United Christian Fellowship of Arlington featuring Reverend George Effian. We pray you have been blessed. You may join us for our next broadcast right here on YouTube by subscribing to our channel or online at ucfarlington.org where you can view additional sermon videos. United Christian Fellowship of Arlington is a diverse church for a diverse world. Thanks for watching.